going on, Jerome's? It is Wednesday. It is hump day. Uh, the Minnesota Fighting Vikings will be back at TCO Performance Center Bar and Grill. First official practice, getting ready for the Los Angeles Superchargers, uh, as well as I'm sure Dalton Reisner will be available for the local media jackal, so it's a big-time day. Uh, but some tidbits uh, on this beautiful Wednesday morning uh, for the Vikings news dump. Uh, first up, so yes, Dalton Reisner, uh, he is here. He is beautiful. He is wonderful. Uh, signing his contract, it, it's fantastic. Now, here's what's really funny. So the Viking social media team decided to gaslight the fans a little bit. Uh, they put out this tweet. You wanted it. He wanted it. We wanted it. Welcome to Minnesota, Dalton Reisner. Uh, like you really wanted it. Like if you really wanted Dalton Reisner, uh, you would sign him back in training camp and eschewed uh, all of the uh, Vikings fans uh, issues uh, along the offensive line. I, I understand that you saved like a half a million in cap. Uh, by having him miss the first two games, but also now he's behind the eight ball, and you're probably going to ask him to start on Sunday on three days of practice. But other than that, it's a really, really good plan. But, hey, you wanted it. Oh, we were paying attention to you. All, all, all that stuff. Nonsense. Just get out of here, man. Uh, something that you should get all up in here is Justin freaking Jefferson. So, J.J. has gone a little bit commercial, which is fantastic, and it's his right and prerogative as the best wide receiver in the National Football League. Uh, he's got some good commercials out there, and his newest sponsor is apparently Cookies. Hmm. Uh, so this is from his uh, Instagram stories. Uh, there's a PJ party going down at every Insomnia Cookies Tuesday night starting at 9 p.m. Ah, dang it, we missed it. Hmm. Uh, show up in your PJs for free cookies, free swag, and sweet deals. Uh, and the company is Insomnia Cookies. Uh, apparently, they deliver cookies till like 3 a.m. really late. Now, I've watched Breaking Bad and Lo Los uh, Poyos Hermanos, you know, the Chicken Brothers. Uh, is there something else going on? With these late night deliveries, like who who who's really jonesing for uh, like oatmeal raisin at 3 a.m.? Mm. Just want to know what's what's up. But either way, uh, cool ass sponsor and Justin Jefferson. Uh, oh, uh, it, it works in conjunction with his Sleep Number sponsorship. There we go, man. Uh, so someone who should be getting a sponsorship is uh, Jordan Addison. Uh, getting a little pasta on. This is from uh, his stories on the gram. So. Not sure which restaurant this is. Maybe it's Bar La Grasse or something. But either way, this looks fantastic. Uh, on the left, uh, looks like uh, may maybe some vodka sauce. May maybe it's that's going on with the spaghetti. Maybe a bolognese. Lots of chives. Uh, I'm certainly down for that. Uh, on the right, uh, looks like gnocchi. Uh, looks like they're already into their fall menu, wh which I'm perfectly okay with. Looks like uh, roasted carrots, brown butter, uh, maybe some sage in there. Uh, a little bit of curry would really make, make that thing pop. Also, uh, judging by the nails, looks like Addison's got himself a date. Get down, man. Get down with three. That's right. But um, that looks fantastic. I'm glad that he's getting carved up because uh, – oh, also uh, Uber – Mm. Uh, but he, he definitely needs the carbs and, and the energy for getting uh, a touchdown every single game. Uh, can, can we just get 17 touchdowns for the Rook? would be beautiful, man. It would be fantastic. Also fantastic and also a rookie is uh, Ivan Pace Jr. Now, we haven't decided on a nickname yet. Uh, Pace Setter seems a little bit too obvious. Uh, some, something to do with Ivan makes sense since it's a unique name. Uh, Ivan the Terrible, you know, a shout it back to history. Or Crazy Ivan, the uh, Russian submarine move. Or um, I Ivan Drago Pace, uh, I must break you. Uh, we'll work something out. But uh, PFF, uh, week two highest graded rookies, minimum of 20 snaps. Uh, Ivan Pace Jr. checking in at 3, 86.3. You love to see it. I uh, had a fistful of tackles, had himself half a sack. Uh, also, great pressure rate, too. Uh, Christian Gonzalez topping things off at 90.9. .9, had himself an interception, a great game uh, against the Dolphins and a losing effort. Uh, then you got Bergeron, of course. So, uh, the fact that Ivan Pace Jr. is getting all this love and attention as a UDFA uh, in only his second career NFL game uh, is pretty damn fantastic. And he's going to be a mainstay on the Vikings defense for many years to come, hopefully. Also, a mainstay is the Vikings and DVOA. So, last year, the Vikings were. Bottom half of the league in terms of DVOA, but they went 13 and four. And uh, Aaron Schatz, uh, formerly Football Outsiders, uh, pointed this out: the Minnesota Vikings have a positive DVOA, and despite an 0 and 2 record, uh, they truly are living in opposite land compared to 2022. And we said this: where the Vikings, all their wounds are self-inflicted, and frankly, they outplayed the Eagles, and they should have won handily on Thursday night, and they should have beat the Buccaneers Week One. But woulda, coulda, shoulda, they didn't get things done. But they are playing 
overall, uh, outstanding football. I mean, they can. it's a passer, get the passer league, and the Vikings have both of those uh, in spades, uh, but it is what it is at this point. And that's one of the reasons why, uh, beyond the point differential, beyond the DVO gra- uh, DVOA grades, that's why a lot of people thought that the Vikings were for uh, last year, even at 13-4. and four. But so that narrows to around, like, would you rather play really well and lose or uh, play poorly, uh, get a little, little bit lucky and win? I don't know. I, I, I don't know, man. Uh, something I also don't know. Well, I do know with Florio, that's not a thermos. But uh, uh, pro football talk power rankings, again, the most accurate power rankings in known universe are out right now. So go check that out as well. But uh, he's got the Vikings at 25, which I understand. I mean, the Vikings allegedly 0-2 at this point, chilling with the other 0-2 teams. Uh, I, I understand it. I get it right now. But, I mean, how are the Lions still up at 11, at 1-1? One and one? Like, how, how are the Jets off of that performance uh, against the Cowboys at 9 still? I, I understand, like, they were probably, you know, top 6-7 when things started. Uh, but Aaron a- Rodgers ain't walking back through that door, man. Yeah, you're, you're stuck with Zach Wilson for the time being. So how, how are they still that high? Don't get like how how are the Giants? Hey, hey, Giants, how, how are you 13? You got your asses handed to you week one by the Cowboys, and you needed uh, a, a monstrumental comeback against the Cardinals uh, to beat the worst team in football week two. Congratulations. Well, second worst team because the worst team is the Bears. That's right. That's right, man. But it's okay. Again, writing it down is disrespect. That's how we roll, and we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, again, you know, Florio. He's a self-hating Vikings fan, which a lot of us are. I mean, we have to hate ourselves a little bit to put ourselves through through this, but uh, maybe it's sadomasochism. Don't really know. Don't really know, man. What I do know is (sighs) Kirk freaking Cousins is doing the damn thing. You like that? Absolutely. So uh, 30-13 pointing this out. Kirkywa is uh, second in the league in passing yards, uh, only seven yards behind Tua, uh, who threw for five bajillion yards against the Chargers week one, and the Vikings get the Chargers at home, no big deal. Uh, but Kirk, so passing yards is always an incomplete stat where it could be you you rack up a lot of passing yards because you have a dominant passing offense, or you rack up a lot of passing yards because your ass is in garbage time and catch up mode. Now, you know, part of that is part of that, uh, but uh, you know, Kirk. I mean, Kirk and this passing game with J.J. and T.J. and Addison and K.J., please hang on to the football. Uh, I mean, this passing game it has looked really damn good, even with the offensive line in flux, even with no running game, and even with the defense uh, unable to stop the run. But, I mean, Kirk is uh, you know, Kirk is also 69 NFL in terms of QBR, 71.3, which is a stat which – uh, factors in uh, the the leverage uh, of the game. Like, do you, are you playing good when the game matters, or do you play good when the game is out of hand? All, all that stuff. And it's generally been a stat that hasn't been kind to Kirk, but uh, it, represent, it represents that Kirk is uh, doing damn good right now, as well as uh, in terms of further into the stats. So, uh, Alec Lewis, the athletic, go. The Vikings passing offense has been elite through two games, and the numbers bear it out. Kirk Cousins has uh, a, a zero 0.13 EPA per dropback, expected point added, sure, uh, per True, True Media Sports, uh, which would have been fourth in the NFL last year. The Jordan Addison addition uh, paying real dividends, and Justin Jefferson is insane. So basically every single play the uh, with Kirk under center, he's adding 0.13 uh, expected points. So I assume that's good. I don't know. Like For an Asian, I'm not really into math, uh, and all these new age analytics are – I don't know, but either way, uh, the black and white numbers say that Kirk is doing well. Uh, the analytics say that he's doing well uh, as, uh, also, so it's fantastic. But uh, that's it. That's it. Let's uh, take a look at some random Vikings uh, news stories. Uh, Wednesday morning, Vikings news dump. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo, but to next time, Skull Production Value.